buongiorno. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Antonio. Um, and thank you very much for being again with us. Um, seems to thank be Antonio. Me. Sorry. Thanks for inviting me. No, I mean, I think that uh, we are just undermined. It is an historical moment because I've been informed that uh, you are the first chair of the board attending meeting with the staff because before it was not uh, an habit and even not the wish to discuss with the, with the users. And uh, I hope that it will be on your end over to the next presidency that these good products can stay even after your, <coughs> your mandate. Um, after the last meeting, we, we got the final version of the two document that we have promised and I've been sharing that with all the colleagues. Uh, I want to underline to the colleagues that all the question, all each and every question that we have received, we be dealt with. Uh, some question can be dealt with with, uh, with Antonio, those more at political level. Uh, the ones who are dealing with the day by day management of the European schools will be dealt with the section, but also and with the director of the schools. <laughs> so. Don't be afraid that we just undermine your question. Uh, I'm not promising that all the question will be satisfactory, but it's clear that we have promised that all the question will be raised and will ensure a proper follow up of the question raised. During the timeline between the two conferences, Antonio, we have been informed that is now confirmed that the fifth school in Brussels will be delayed. Uh, for how long is still not clear. And then, uh, as arise several concerns of our colleagues concerning the inscription policy, how we can deal with the overwhelming of some schools. Uh, is there any flexibility that can be introduced in the system in order to cope with this new scenario? Uh, by the way, we have been informed also that the Belgium has confirmed that there is no question of any sixth school. The fifth one will be the last one. Uh, then open also another discussion of our, for the future. Uh, we have been in, informing the commissioner and about the, this situation, uh, addressing a letter to him that you got copy of, uh, and we are waiting for the answers. We don't know exactly who is in charge of finding the possible flexibility in the system. It is the commission who has to push for that. It is the, the schools who must decide upon. And there will be one of the of the question raised by our colleagues. Then I, I leave the floor to you for uh, for an introduction of or explaining to us uh, what has been the outcome of your uh, discussion after the last meeting that we have. And then, as last time, I will give the floor to my colleagues Alexander and, and Marco that will put forward the question that I've been receiving. Meanwhile, and thank you very much, Antonio, for being with us. Yes, thanks, uh, Cristiano, for uh, inviting me again, uh, um, and thanks to everybody for attending these uh, these meetings. Uh, indeed, as, as you as you announced, uh, I have been attending uh, um, another meeting with the uh, um, with the personnel. Uh, I think that uh, this is a good practice, uh, if I can say. And uh, I really hope that uh, the incoming presidency uh, from Cyprus uh, will keep uh, uh, this uh, new approach because uh, it's not only a matter of transparency, uh, which is also a good thing, uh, but I think it's very important for the rotating presidency to really uh, get into the real world of, of uh, the European schools, apart from uh, the meetings of the board of governors, apart from the official documents, uh, it, it is. I think it is very important to to talk to everybody, to the stakeholders, to talk to uh, parents, to the teachers, uh, to the pupils, and uh, uh, I think it is it, it is worth. So I, I will suggest. Uh, uh, to my um, uh, colleague from Cyprus, uh, uh, to 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 keep this uh, this uh, approach. Um, as you know, um, or might might know, uh, we um, on Friday we will gather in Cyprus uh, 
for the end over meeting uh, 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 with the with the new presidency it will be also a good opportunity to to take stock of the work done and uh, uh, to launch uh, let's say this uh, uh, this uh, approach of uh, having a, a mid term long term program of of the of the presidencies uh, as you know you you had the opportunity to to examine the, the, the two important documents approved uh, by the Board of Governors uh, in, in, in Parma, uh, the action plan, which is the, let's say, um, detailed uh, plan of, uh, uh, of approved actions to, to implement uh, the, um, the report from the European Parliament from one side, and from the other side, the Parma Declaration, which is uh, uh, let's say more political document giving um, let's say a, 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 a mid-term long-term perspective of our action and uh, uh, I think today it, this is a, a good opportunity for for us to discuss uh, about these two documents which, which are the also the legal basis of uh, the action of the next presidency um, I know that you are very interested in what's going on concerning uh, uh, the the um, Brussels sites of the school, of course, uh, but please not don't forget that uh, uh, European schools are um, bigger than Brussels, even if we are all based in Brussels, and uh, uh, we are very sensitive uh, um, about what what going on in in in, uh, in Brussels. Um, you asked me what happened uh, after our meeting in April. Uh, well, not, not that much for as, as far as the presidency is concerned. We have been working to prepare uh, our endover documents. Uh, we have been working to uh, to get ready for the uh, the meeting in Cyprus next next week. Uh, we've been following up uh, um, the, the activation of the steering committee, uh, which is the the body. Uh, dealing with the uh, present, dealing with all the the issues of the the new site uh, of the ver site, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, from my point of view, uh, I as a chair, I uh, I mean uh, I, I cannot get too much into the details of, of, of what's going on because uh, uh, and all the stakeholders are involved uh, uh, in the discussion, in the ongoing discussion. It's uh, Sometimes it's very sensitive issues uh, relating also uh, the the, um, the relation with the Belgian government. Uh, we had elections at all sides, uh, at all levels. We had European elections. We had uh, uh, local elections in Belgium. So um, uh, I mean, the, the, the now we, we 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 need to keep going and working on on the several issues open. I'll be glad today to, to share my view on, on, on the points you have raised. Uh, um, also, I think uh, uh, that uh, the beginning of the new, um, the starting of the new parliament, uh, European parliament, it's a good opportunity also to, uh, uh, to propose to the new, the new parliament, the new commission, uh, uh, the results uh, we achieved during the last year of presidency. Uh, you might be aware that uh, um, the Secretary General and myself, we, we sent a letter to the President of the European Parliament and to the Council uh, and also to the Commission uh, um, attaching the, the two documents we've been discussing, the Parma Declaration and the Action Plan. So the idea is uh, to make the political level, the top level, aware of uh, the progress uh, made uh, uh, during the, this year of, of presidency. And of course, we are looking forward to uh, to to keep discussing uh, all these issues uh, with the new commissioner uh, in charge of uh, uh, of uh, the human resources and the European schools uh, um, as soon as uh, it will be in place. Uh, I don't know if um, this is uh, enough as an introduction. You want to move on to the to your points? 
Oh, or yeah. if you have any, any other questions, please uh, don't hesitate. Oh, th thank you very much for your availability. Um, Antonio, I will give the floor to Alexander that he has been with Marco recalling all the questions uh, that we received. Um, Alexander. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cianini. Thank you, Cristiano, for this uh, introduction and for the uh, being the, the force behind <laughs> the, the idea of the starting this meet, very valuable meetings. Uh, just for the start, I wanted to uh, elaborate a little on the questions. As, as Cristiano mentioned, we filter out some questions which are which we think uh, are not within the scope of the Board of Governors. And for this meeting, we we selected the questions which we think are the most current and pressing issues uh, at the moment. Uh, so, uh, please use chat if you want to pose additional follow-up questions. If they will not fit uh, within our topics that we will be discussing today, we will certainly attach them to the list of questions that we received previously, and we will try to, to answer them or, or send them to the relevant stakeholders which uh, can answer them, be it on the level of Secretary General or or individual schools or, or other bodies uh, that uh, are responsible. So, for, for the start, uh, uh, I think the, the most uh, important issue and most interesting to to our colleagues with, with kids in the European schools or children soon to, to join European schools is the question of the new proposed school, the EEB-5 in Nederover Hembeck. Uh, that is uh, delay. So the question would be uh, that given the announced uh, delays and the, and the general overcrowding situation, what is the plan to ensure that the Belgian authorities will, will uh, keep with their obligation to provide the appropriate infrastructure for the European schools? And also given the, the history of uh, delays and non-compliance that we had with the previous school e before in Laken, uh, is there a plan to take further actions on the political level? Yes, th thanks very much uh, for this question. I, I, I remember that we already started to discuss uh, this issue uh, during the first meeting because as you as you remember the announcement of the delay has been done uh, on the first day of the board of governors held in parma by the belgian delegation um, at that time uh, uh, we also uh, knew that uh, uh, new elections uh, uh, were coming in in, uh, in june so um, what i can say concerning this is that uh, uh, immediately, the Secretary General of the European Schools announced the activation of the steering committee and uh, uh, the Commission uh, uh, at the level of the Commissioner, Commissioner Hahn and the Secretary General have been in constant uh, um, uh, exchange with the Belgian authorities. Um, <clears throat> so I, I imagine because uh, I haven't been uh, myself involved in these steps uh, uh, recently. That uh, uh, now it will be uh, it will take a, a little while before the new the new government in Belgium will uh, uh, will take its duties. And uh, uh, what I can say is that uh, the European school system is totally aware of the urgency of. Uh, uh, of the situation, uh, there are uh, discussions ongoing uh, on um, on what to do to make sure that families uh, can uh, uh, can be informed on time on uh, on the decisions adopted. This is what I can say at at, at my level. Uh, um, also. Um, I mean, uh, uh, concerning the, your second question, uh, um, this is a matter of relations between uh, between the European Commission and, and uh, government, uh, as it is for other governments, because uh, um, 
uh, uh, what has been also discussed uh, in Parma uh, in the last Board of Governors is that uh, uh, we need to keep uh, uh, a high level dialogue uh, with, uh, with national governments uh, to make sure they, they respect the, uh, the decisions taken, uh, they deliver on time, not only on, on, uh, on the buildings, of course, but also uh, on uh, the secondment of teachers uh, on, and all aspects concerning the European school. So, uh, what I can say is that uh, uh, this is part of the priorities uh, uh, set in also in, in, into the uh, our political declarations. And uh, I'm really confident that uh, 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 all the necessary solutions will be will be adopted uh, uh, in a due time. So uh, this is. Uh, my, my perception uh, at this moment. Thank you. Marco, do you want to? Okay. Thank you for, for giving me the mic. Um, hello, Mr. Cenini. I, I would have a question or a batch of questions linked to the EVER site. I've noted, although you mentioned the problem of the election in Belgium and the different political levels that are involved, I want to remember everybody that we have still local election in October. So, uh, uh, in some case, for some replies, the election of October will be also uh, uh, to be taken into account, not not the results, but in general that the local uh, governments are really prudent in giving uh, information in this phase. So, uh, I wanted to talk about the EVER site. Um, the question is, what is the future of the Ever School in Brussels? I would call it more uh, annex of Olivier than school by itself. But what is the plan for language section located there? This is a first part. The second is, uh, what is the plan for the future students who take classes in Ever, I suppose the fact that they could come back to Voluve for higher level classes and what is the recruitment plan for the next years? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Marco. Um, uh, so, of course, this uh, this issue, the Versailles, is uh, uh, strictly linked to the uh, the former issue we, we've been discussing at the beginning of this meeting. Um, I, I would start from uh, um, a consideration. Uh, the current planning foreseen uh, for a ver is. Uh, um, uh, Foresees its existence at least at least until 2037. So, we are in 2024, and uh, so it means that uh, we still have uh, quite a long uh, uh, time ahead, more than 12 years to uh, to see uh, what what's going on. Um, why am, am I saying that? Uh, because this is already something that. Uh, Parents should uh, uh, really take into account. Uh, we should. Um, we could also imagine of somebody starting uh, uh, in a ver today and uh, taking his back uh, before any any changes is foreseen. So, um, a ver uh, is meant to become a permanent site of uh, of Brussels too. Uh, this is uh, uh, what uh, what's legally uh, on, on paper now. And uh, I don't have any uh, concrete uh, elements to say that uh, it will not uh, happen. So for the moment, I would stick to to reality. And uh, 
and see what what's going on uh, in the coming years. Um, as uh, concerning your second question, if I understand well, what is the plan for language section located there? Um, I would uh, go back to the Board of Governors of December 2022 uh, for, the, for that, because there is already a decision taking, taken by the Board of Governors in 2022. And uh, uh, there is also a mandate for the Brussels Steering Committee um, to analyze uh, the implementation of, of this decision and, uh, uh, and to provide uh, the, the, the Board of Governors in December 2024 um, with a report and uh, uh, concrete uh, and operational proposals uh, on how to, uh, to implement uh, this decision. Um, I think that uh, it is important to underline that parents and the future parents are members of the steering committee, uh, which will present uh, the report in autumn. So uh, I would suggest uh, uh, all these uh, uh, parents uh, uh, to, uh, to participate and to be present and to interact uh, uh, to make sure that uh, uh, this report in autumn will uh, take into account all the needs uh, um, and uh, uh, all their requests. This is what I can say concerning the, uh, the second question. Uh, you also mentioned the, the future students uh, who take classes in EVA. Uh, what I can say is that uh, they will continue their studies in, in the secondary cycle. Uh, and uh, uh, or in case of any changes uh, in the volume site uh, of Brussels, Brussels too. Uh, and uh, as to, uh, I, I don't know if I understood well what, what the, the last question about the recruitment. Yes, I would say to the policy recruitment. I suppose, I suppose for siblings. Um, I'll come back. Uh, I suppose, and for language section, of course, I mean, I'm we're trying to put all these questions together, but I imagine that we don't have, I mean, uh, we don't have an exact I, well, I, I, I hope I got the, the point. I mean, uh, the recruitment plan for or teachers will follow the needs uh, of, of, of the sections. So uh, for the moment, I, I, I don't think there will be any major changes con concerning the recruitment plan. Uh, but uh, on, also on this, I would uh, uh, report uh, to, to, the, um, to the report uh, uh, prepared for, which is being prepared for, for the Board of Governors in, uh, in, in December uh, to make sure that all the needs concerning recruit, recruitment are, are, um, are, are respected and uh, the, 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 new, the new classes uh, will have the necessary teachers uh, in, on time. Thank you very much. I'll pass the floor to Alexander now for the next batch of questions. You're welcome. Yes, uh, thank you. We, I think we have two questions in the chat that relate to this, what, was, what has just been said. One is, uh, will ever a school be only primary school? So can, can you, I think you, you've, you've just mentioned Mr. Zanini that there, will, there is also a plan for secondary cycle in Evere. Can you confirm this or? Uh, no, sorry, I, I didn't get I didn't get the point. Sorry. Uh, the the question is, will Evere will only be primary school? Well, I mean, uh, uh, um, I, I I I cannot give you a yes or no uh, answer on this. Uh, um, the, my point of view is that uh, uh, from now till 2037, uh, uh, we will need the room uh, of uh, of Ever uh, to reduce overcrowding. So uh, I would tend to say yes, but uh, 
I mean, it's my personal uh, opinion, not based on, on official uh, positions of the steering committee or, or the secretary general. You should uh, ask the question to Mr. Beckman. And the, the other question in the chat is, uh, on what commitment is the based the Everest site until 2037? Uh, you mean uh, what are the, the you mean uh, at the legal level? Yes. I mean, this is the commitment taken so far uh, by, by, by the Belgian government with the, uh, with the European Commission, the European school system. Uh, I, I am aware that uh, uh, there, there have been many speculations on, on the future of the bear uh, that uh, uh, officially uh, there is still, uh, uh, let's say, a, a temporary school uh, status on, on this site. Uh, but uh, as I anticipated at the very beginning, the announcement of the delay of the fifth school uh, uh, will uh, make it urgent to find uh, uh, alternative solutions to to reduce overcrowding. So uh, all this uh, uh, brings me to to uh, to think about the existence of a bear for at least the twelve years, uh, which have been discussed uh, from from the very beginning. Yes, thank you. Uh, the next batch of questions relate to the uh, overcrowding issues, which are manifest in Brussels, but they may also occur elsewhere. So, given that the overcrowding is affecting certain schools and se certain sections in a disproportional manner, what are the planned actions, for example, at the enrollment to address these uh, issues? Uh, what is, at the moment, what is the plan to address overcrowding given the absence of the AB5? Uh, will will the siblings rule be to still enforced and adapted to the developments? And uh, if the size of the classes is too big for many topics and there is not enough space or classrooms, how this issue will be addressed? Okay. So uh, concerning your first question. Uh, uh, so, what are the planned actions to to reduce uh, to reduce overcrowding? If I have got your point, uh, well, the the, the system is uh, uh, trying the best to uh, to to reach a fair distribution of pupils uh, over the six sides uh, of the four schools uh, by respecting uh, the, the the concept of siblings. So. The concept of sibling is still uh, uh, important for the system, uh, which means uh, protecting siblings uh, at the same school uh, and uh, at the same school site within the same cycle. So this is what uh, uh, the system is trying to to, to achieve. Uh, so to reach a fair distribution, to to reduce the uh, most urgent cases of. of uh, um, uh, of overcrowding. Uh, concerning your second uh, uh, question, uh, um, uh, so the, the the idea is to use the existing space in an optimal manner uh, and uh, try to get uh, also find out in interim facilities. Uh, to cover the period until the, the opening of the fifth school, uh, uh, hopefully in uh, in September uh, 2030, 2031. So, uh, once again, I would go back to the work of the of the steering committee and uh, also the discussions uh, between the, the commission and secretary general uh, and the Belgian authorities are ongoing uh, to find out uh, what possible solutions uh, uh, are available uh, um, to get uh, interim facilities. So, this is at this stage uh, what uh, what we can say. I don't know if the, you had another question on this uh, on the overcrowding or. No, I think that that is all that we have, Marco. 
can we move to the next chapter? You are still muted. Uh, okay. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, so I have some some problems with my computer. I will have to reconnect after shortly after this batch of questions. So uh, the batch is about language section. Um, 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 how uh, are there any solution affective language section like the Netherlands and Italian and what mitigating measures are foreseen for family concerned? Um, I suppose this is a uh, link to the Voluve site. I'm 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 not sure. Uh, um, the, the second part about language section are solution taken into account to um, to the need to avoid disproportionate growth of French section in certain schools. There is another question on the future of English section in Brussels. And then I would, I would, uh, there is another uh, question about language section, but I would uh, uh, prefer to put it in local language afterwards. So I will, I would stop there with these first three. What we could do meanwhile, waiting for Antonio coming back, uh, just to announce you the batch of questions or the chapter of the question that we'll be raising by. Alexander and Marco. Uh, so Marco has already announced the questions and language sections. Then we will have a que questions on distribution of students among sites based on geographical criteria. Then we will have a question on local language, especially Luxembourg and Flemish language. Uh, introduce or not. Um, then opening the school to the community after the COVID and because people would like to, to go back with more social life even after the, the lessons. <clears throat> and then there, there are questions on the teaching days um, in order to ensure that uh, 180 working days are ensured at all level. That is a batch of questions that we have been uh, summarizing based on the question that you have put on the form. Uh, I want to confirm that the form will be open uh, at any time because these two meetings are just for us the starting point of uh, intensive dialogue with you. Uh, it's not just uh, over after the meeting. Uh, we will uh, do exactly the same with the new Cyprus presidency, uh, asking them to keep on this good practice of meeting colleagues and stakeholders because I think that is a uh, really helpful. Uh, we do share your frustration that it's not that easy to get one single person able to deal with all concerns uh, because the actors are so many and it's not that easy to understand who can do what uh, because they are the board of governance, then they are the section, then they are the director of schools, then they are the GHR, then there is the commissioner, then there is the parliament. Uh, and even for us, it's not that easy to decide from scratch to whom address the question that you have been raising. Sometimes we need to, to have a several actors around the table. Uh, and <clears throat> the, the more uh, clear cut case is uh, the Belgium authority is dealing with schools uh, because we don't know exactly to whom we can address the question. And everyone is hiding himself. Uh, um, on the responsibility of someone else. Uh, the directors of the school are pretending that everything is decided by the section. The commission is uh, arguing that she is not by itself deciding everything. So we want to, to give our own contribution in order to build a team spirit and teamwork because we need to have all the actors. And as Antonio has just mentioned, it's also important that uh, uh, parents and pupils are active also on their behalf, not just waiting for the results, but uh, being 
pushing for our proposals and uh, looking for results from because they are the ones who knows the system for Antonio we have the, the chance that Antonio knows uh, perfectly the system because his daughters were enrolling on the European schools but it's not always the case uh, sometimes the chairmanship of the European schools is not so familiar with the system and in six months it's not easy to get first familiar and then to get effective I will see if Antonio is back with us so, I Meanwhile, well, I want also to deal with another question who has been raised on top of those uh, sent on our form. Is the pos possibility to have also in Brussels um, accredited schools as we have in Luxembourg? Uh, then could be eventually a solution for the overcrowding system. Um, I know that. Uh, DGHR is uh, having a look of this possibility because the experience of colleagues in Luxembourg seems to be uh, quite positive. I don't know if among the participants there are colleagues who have their children in, uh, in the Luxembourg schools. That could be helpful to get also their feeling about it. Uh, it's clear that the Luxembourg government is putting a lot of money in the system in order to to ensure the quality of the system for the schools. Uh, <clears throat> but it's just at this stage a reflection. Uh, Antonio is mentioning that the piece is really slow. We were uh, discussing the, the issue of language sections, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. All right. Maybe we can go back to the questions because I, I yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's the day. <laughs> uh, okay, so I will repeat the questions related to the language sections. Uh, so, how, w w what are any solutions uh, that uh, relate? To the language sections like uh, Dutch and Italian section that uh, that are supposed to be transferred, I think, from EB4 to EB5. And uh, what are the the mitigation measures for the intermediary period foreseen for the families concerned, given the delay of the EB5? Uh, are there solutions? Uh, taking into account the need to avoid the disproportionate growth of the French language sections in certain schools? Uh, and what is the future of English section in Brussels after the Brexit? So, okay. Um, concerning your question on uh, Dutch and Italian uh, language sections, uh, so it, I, 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 I'm sorry to repeat uh, always the same thing, but uh, uh, this issue is well known and uh, it's, uh, it's currently discussed in the Brussels Steering Committee. Uh, proposals are, are under evaluations and will be formally made in December 2024 uh, Board of Governors. Uh, so it is, uh, of course, time to to share your proposals and uh, and uh, uh, your suggestions uh, in the steering committee to make sure that uh, these two language sections are, are find uh, find a good uh, um, a good solution. Uh, on the French section, on the other side, uh, I mean, this is. Uh, um, there is no solution to, 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 to the growth of the French sections. Uh, um, is a, it is a fact, and uh, we have to deal with it, with a, a realistic approach. Um, we can try to, um, 
to, to, to find solution by uh, distributing well pupils, <laughs> pupils among uh, the six sites, but uh, we can do nothing if uh, so many people want to attend the, the, the French section. So uh, it, is a, it is a fact. And um, concerning the future of the English section in Brussels, but well, uh, this is, I remember this is a question already discussed in the, in the first meeting we had. But I can confirm that uh, all schools uh, uh, will maintain the English language section uh, uh, in Brussels. So no worries about this. Thank you very much. Uh, the next uh, chapter, the next uh, question is, uh, there is a single question actually. Is there is a plan to take the into account the geographical proximity criterion allocating students to the closest sites during the uh, inscription period or later in order to minimize the duration of trips necessary for them yeah thank you no i mean uh, this is a sensitive issue I, I know it very well the geographical proximity but as you know it was already difficult to deal with this uh, issue in normal times. Now we are not living in normal times. Uh, now we are living in, in, uh, in special times with uh, overcrowding and uh, uh, rethinking of the, of the enrollment policy. So I think that for the moment this is, this is not possible. So uh, the, the moment we will have the fifth site and uh, everything will be settled. So maybe we could start again to think about this uh, this principle, but uh, unfortunately, it, this is not for for now. Uh, I can go ahead, Alexander. Okay. I'm online with my welcome back. <laughs> Thanks. So we'll 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 get back, uh, Antonio, on the the question of local languages. I mean, uh, I mean, the question here could be reproduced other for other countries, but. Uh, uh, it came out uh, the, the question of the um, inclusion of the Luxembourgish and Flemish languages in the curriculum for facilitating the entering in the labor market in Luxembourg and Belgium. Um, and the question was if for Luxembourg, if there was the possibility to have an option for L3, L4, and 5 to start Luxembourgish, this is the first, this is linked to Luxembourg. And, uh, and uh, the, the question seems the same for Flemish. Of course, we have the Netherlands section in Brussels. But I see it also for German in other situations is that L3 starts from the level zero, whereas it, but it can be an option chosen by also by bilingual or trilingual children who started with other languages and come in these classes together. What can be done about this to facilitate students at different level of knowledge? I personally know that for German, they try to do it with advanced class in the class. Uh, uh, but I leave you the floor to reply. Thank you. So this is not a, a very a very easy question. I will try to uh, share with you the information I have. Um, as far as I know, um, we already have. Uh, uh, Luxembourgish uh, uh, as a L5, so as an option uh, in uh, for classes S6 and S7. Uh, and uh, um, as far as I remember from discussions held with the, with the Luxembourgish uh, delegation, uh, uh, they are planning uh, to request the introduction of uh, of Luxembourg, uh, Luxembourgish also. Uh, as a L4 uh, for the um, classes from S4 to S7. 
this is possible according to the European Schools Language Policy. So it's a matter of uh, uh, how the um, competent delegation is uh, proactive to, to go ahead with, with this proposal. Um, I think that so far the Office of the Secretary General has not received uh, an interest from, from uh, uh, the Luxembourgish delegation to introduce uh, uh, Luxembourgish in L3, as L3, but uh, it is still op uh, possible, uh, uh, it's an open option. Uh, uh, I, I, I would uh, uh, ask you please to, to uh, uh, to say again, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the second question, I, 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 I don't remember what, what you, you asked. Um, yes, I know. Uh, but it, it is linked, I mean, is the question is that uh, some pupils are entering L3 at different level of knowledge of the language. And this is quite normal. We'll see this in the German L uh, language or in in uh, in the French. If P, if pupils are taking French as L four, you have pupils who have a, a French mother or a, a German mother that are entering the class at a higher level than the pupils that don't have family that is speaking this language. So you have big discrepancy in the level of the children that are entering um, uh, particularly L L3. Huh? Um, okay, well, so I also on this point, I will try to uh, put together my knowledge of, of, of the of the issue. As you know, uh, the choice uh, uh, of L3 is free. So it's a, an option and, uh, and any of the EU languages can be organized as L3, uh, provided there is a minimum number of pupils requesting it as any other options, as you know. So seven pupils, uh, uh, it means that we need at least seven pupils from S1 to S5 and five pupils in S6 and S7. Um, and of course, uh, schools normally do not recommend that, that pupils choose uh, an L3 in which they are um, already proficient. So if, if you if you already uh, proficient, it's it's better not not to take this this uh, this option um, because uh, in general L3 is an absolute beginner's course in S1. So. Um, uh, having said that, for each language level, there is a minimum attainment level uh, established according to the Common European Framework of Reference. So, um, uh, the minimum level, uh, the minimum levels also for for L3 uh, are already higher than uh, uh, in most of the national systems. So, uh, this is more or less what what I can say. Uh, but uh, I mean, if you have any uh, specific interest on this, uh, I, um, I can share later on uh, um, uh, a scheme uh, describing exactly how this uh, uh, this is organized, uh, uh, the language disposition in the system, uh, compared also to, to national school systems. I don't know if uh, I got the point or. Oh, but, uh, Antonio, you got perfectly the point. For me, it's clear it's a question of resource that put in the school, because as I said, you could in the same class organize two uh, uh, two teachers that are taking the part of the uh, uh, scholars that are at a much higher level and giving them other things to do, but it's the system of the school. I mean, uh, we have kids that are bilingual or trilingual since the beginning. And so I, I, I think that probably we should only take care that all the school have the same possibility to adapt to the need of the scholars, but uh, it's complicated. I agree with you.
Yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, uh, of course, uh, I, I mean, uh, we're not scared about uh, complicated uh, issues, of course, uh, but the, the, the starting point should be uh, to understand uh, the nature of L3. So if you are already proficient, please don't, 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 uh, don't make this option and don't choose L3 because you um, easily find uh, in a group of, uh, of pupils uh, with uh, a, a lower level of knowledge of, of this language. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Th there is uh, one follow-up question related to the language section, so I will try to formulate it uh, so we can close the chapter of related to the language sections. There is a question that European school system does not currently provide for the free choice of language section, but makes it on the basis of the uh, dominant language of the pupil. Uh, do you see, Mr. Cennini, that this uh, will change in the future or it will remain like it is? Well, I, I think that it will remain like it is. Uh, following all the discussions we we, we had uh, during these months, also starting to imagine a new mission and vision of the schools, which is also the big uh, uh, issue of the next year to come, uh, to, to write, rewrite the mission and vision uh, of the European schools. Uh, European schools are not international schools. This very special and unique nature of European schools is the uh, multilingual uh, uh, approach based uh, on the knowledge of the mother tongue, on the teaching of the mother tongue as a, as a language one. And uh, I think that uh, uh, we need to preserve this, this approach because uh, uh, this is the, at the end of the day, the real uh, added value of, 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 this, uh, of this system compared to other systems. So um, having said that, uh, uh, of course, we can, uh, uh, we can do some more maybe to, to improve uh, uh, the, te the teaching of uh, second language and third language and fourth language, as we discussed in the recent uh, point. But uh, uh, the fact that the first language will uh, still be the mother tongue, uh, I think that it's part of the um, specific nature of the European school system. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the next... Uh, uh group of questions uh, relates to the uh, opening of the schools after the uh, COVID-19 regime was introduced uh, and that resulted in uh, basically keeping the parents and children out of the school grounds and certain disintegration of the school community. Uh, the question is, what are the plans to bring back parents, teachers and students together and how to reopen the school grounds for after school activities or even weekend activities? Well, uh, I must say that uh, uh, this is one of the issues uh, uh, you and we should discuss uh, um, at the local level with the, with the, with the schools. Uh, uh, of course, the COVID uh, time was uh, a, a very special time, and uh, and uh, not everybody went back to to to, to the situation before COVID. Uh, we are aware of this, uh, but uh, there are also very complicated issues concerning uh, aspects of security. Uh, uh, I must uh, tell you that after the um, terrorist attacks in, in Brussels, uh, many parents uh, uh, wanted to raise the, the security levels of the schools. So there are many conflicting uh, aspects uh, on this. Uh, and uh, this is why I think that the, the best uh, uh, level to, to discuss this issue is the local level with the, with the schools and with the directors. In general, there's nothing going against uh, opening back the schools uh, uh, for during the weekends of activities, but uh, this is also a matter of uh, human resources, of uh, people uh, uh, to, to, to be there to, to guarantee everything is safe. And uh, uh, so, but once again, uh, 
uh, we have different situation from different sides. So it's uh, the local level is the good level to to discuss the issue. Yes, Antonio, if I Thank you. can make mm -hmm. a comment more in general, uh, I for sure there is an issue of security, but uh, 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 the issue of the weekend and give the opportunity to students and parents to use the infrastructure could be more or less achieved. It has a cost, but I think as we are all experts, I think the school is really one of the, the places where parents, I mean, in that phase of the life are, are happy to, to uh, meet. And this, the, this after COVID, I think we should try to get out of this exception as much as possible, of course. Uh, Marco, I, I agree with you. Huh? Uh, I totally share your point. Uh, schools are an opportunity, a space, a very good space to, uh, to gather and uh, to organize activities. Uh, so in, on the principle, I, I'm, I'm, I'm totally supportive with this and uh, we can work on it. My realistic approach is given, I mean, uh, is due to the fact that uh, uh, not always what, uh, what is good uh, is uh, immediately feasible because we need to, uh, to see all aspects, so economic aspects, uh, security aspects. And, but on the principle, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to keep uh, working with you to, to, to try to, uh, to improve the situation. Thank you. I... I have a batch of questions coming about teaching days. Uh, okay. And and I understand this fully. I have uh, uh, a girl uh, uh, who is in S in S three, and uh, uh, S one, S two, S three uh, have. I mean, I I talk about Brussels. Uh, I see they are uh, finishing their school time during the year, I mean, in June, really, really early. So the question, and I'm a little bit surprised, it, because for the higher class, I understand the back and the organization, but we are more and more, I have the impression that the school is more and more cutting, trying to cut costs where it can. So is the number of teaching days actually provided being monitored? What are the plans to ensure that 180 working days are ensured for all levels? And uh, I would say yes. I mean, I would would say are not ensured for all level, but if the monitoring is done by by levels, huh? um, and I would say I understand we have a need because. Uh, there was the question to align with the uh, with the Belgian, I mean, francophone new calendar. But I see there is also their different ideas on what is good for our children that are that are needing to go back in the in their member state. They have travel time, etc. Et so, but how, how, what is your view on? So I mean, you left the most difficult maybe question <laughs> at the end. Um, now, what I can say on this, uh, um, we should also start from reality. Uh, the reality is uh, that uh, the um, the European Baccalaureate is uh, uh, the priority. So what's been decided about this? Uh, uh, is based on the fact that the celebration of the European Baccalaureate uh, in the best possible condition is the very first priority of the schools. Having said that, uh, uh, as you know, the Board of Governors uh, um, decided that uh, uh, we need to uh, suspend the lessons in the secondary school uh, during the organization of the, of the European BAC examinations. Uh, uh, and this is part of the 180 days uh, uh, policy. Uh, why this? Because uh, uh, 
uh, all teachers are involved in uh, the most of the teachers are involved uh, in the oral uh, European baccalaureate examination uh, and uh, as an exam as examiners, supervisors, uh, invigilators, etc. So uh, mm, this is why the secondary lessons uh, uh, need to be suspended. Um, and also, I mean, concerning uh, oral examinations, uh, some uh, uh, parts of the schools uh, uh, need to be closed uh, to provide uh, classrooms, uh, uh, dedicated classroom to, to, to the oral examinations. So um, there is a working group uh, uh, studying the, the issue and analyzing the the possibility of providing alternative activities during the, these uh, examination times. Uh, so um, there is also already a, a, a reflection going on on this. Um, having said that, uh, um, each school has different circumstances. So um, maybe one solution is uh, not good is good for one school, but not good for another school. Uh, so at the end of the day. Uh, any solutions should match uh, the characteristic of uh, of each school. Okay, F thank you, Antonio. Yeah. We are sure that this question has not been raised by students. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> um, I want to be. I wanted just to ask you. We have noticed that in the Parma Declaration. Uh, the importance and the role of accredited European school is stressed uh, in advancing this unique educa educational model. Um, knowing that uh, the sixth school in Brussels would never have been built, uh, do you see any possibility or any uh, suggestion to go also for accredited European schools in Brussels, as it is the case in Luxembourg? Uh, the question has been raised and the concerns has also been raised because apparently, not apparently, because it's a fact that in Luxembourg things uh, are going well because there is a lot of money put by the Luxembourg government in the system. Uh, do you see this as an option uh, for eventually coping with the overcrowding of the European schools in Brussels? Uh, I mean, I, I, I took... Uh... On a personal, uh, I mean, uh, what I'm saying is, is my personal opinion. Um, going back to the to the meeting in Parma and the Parma declaration, uh, uh, the system has decided to uh, invest on the accredited school uh, schools as a uh, um, the matter of uh, of uh, uh, with spreading and uh, disseminating the European schools model. Uh, uh, all around Europe. So uh, there is an accent on uh, facilitating the creations, the creation of new European schools. Uh, uh, already now, as you know, accredited schools are uh, more than, than the, let's say, traditional level one schools. And uh, there will be more new, new schools opening uh, soon, one in Madrid, and, uh, and there are uh, many other um, countries uh, uh, studying uh, and, uh, and uh, reflecting on the possibility to, to open new schools. In my personal view, uh, there, there's no reason why uh, in, it should not uh, happen in Belgium. Uh, but once again, uh, it is at the local government level uh, uh, that the issue should be, should be raised. Uh, in my view, it should be an option and that we should take it to, into account. But uh, what I can suggest uh, is um, uh, to organize a, a discussion and uh, with the local authorities in Belgium uh, to uh, to see what what are, what was was their point concerning this uh, this option. Uh, in my opinion, it would be an option giving a lot of flexibility, and uh, also uh, there is a, an ongoing discussion. Uh, uh, at the European schools level uh, on uh, how to uh, open again uh, the European schools to uh, category two and category three pupils, for example, which is an issue. But this is an issue mainly in Brussels because uh, uh, so uh, the, um, the development of a credit school system, uh, I think.
think it could also help on this point to uh, give also the possibility to category two uh, pupils to finally uh, go back to to school uh, in a European school. So uh, this is something that I, I strongly uh, recommend to to discuss and uh, try to to get some feedback from local authorities in Belgium. Well, thank you very much, uh, Antonio. Uh, I think, uh, again, uh, there is an historical meeting on which we can discuss directly with you with no, no diplomacy. And uh, we have also the advantage that you do know the system because you're, as I was mentioning, we, during the interaction, you and others have been attending the European schools. Uh, I hope that it will be the same for uh, for the new presidency to appoint someone who knows uh, what is going on, because in six months it's impossible to get familiar and then to be effective. Uh, and we really don't need in this uh, crisis situation to have a tourist just showing up uh, or refusing to discuss just because he doesn't know how to deal with questions. Uh, for the colleagues, uh, it's clear that each and every question will be submitted to the competent uh, uh, authorities, uh, some of them to the directors, some of them to the section, some other the GHR, some other jointly to different actors because it's a joint work that must be done. Uh, and the governance of the system is not the easiest one. We all understand perfectly that. Uh, I think that we must also be happy on top of our concerns for the schools in Brussels to to the political approach which has been given, uh, promoted by the parliament, endorsed by the Parma Declaration, uh, because we want the European school to be a tool for spreading the European project, European values, also where there is not an institution, uh, because it is a bit a strong contradiction to have schools where pupils actually don't need to be educated to the European values because they are member of the family or those who are supposed to to share these values and there is nothing where perhaps we need to get them uh, and could also give a contribution to the results of the election or European barometers because sometimes people are just criticizing what they don't know uh, and to learn is the first step to get family and to support uh, the European values. I leave the floor to you for the final recollection for if, if any anything to be added and I thank you again really warmly Antonio. So, uh, thank you very much, Cristiano. What I can say uh, as a final remarks uh, is that uh, uh, I've learned a lot during this year as a chair of the Board of Governors. I, I really um, had the opportunity to, to be in contact with all the stakeholders and uh, I didn't want to play my role as, a, let's say, uh, an institutional role, but I, I was helped by the fact that uh, I'm a parent as well. So I've been a parent uh, of three kids uh, attending the European schools. And uh, let me say, uh, I'm a father of a four month uh, girl, uh, baby girl. So uh, I will uh, go back again uh, soon uh, to European schools as, as, a, as a parent, <laughs> as soon as, uh, Matilde will be uh, old enough to, to attend the European school. So uh, this is also to, to guarantee that uh, I will keep uh, uh, working on, on, on the European schools. It's a system that I love. Uh, uh, I think that uh, it's one of the big achievements of, of, the, of Europe to have this uh, system of education. And uh, it is worth to fight for this and uh, to uh, uh, make it stronger and stronger. It's, uh, Europe uh, is facing a, a very uh, big uh, challenges at the global level. And I think it's the best way is to, uh, to teach the world what was the European way of life and our values and, uh, and European schools are the best tool uh, we have to uh, to keep it alive. So it's been a pleasure. Please count or keep counting on me uh, for the future and uh, uh, I will be glad to attend to your conferences as a parent uh, as soon as my role of chair uh, will be finished. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you very much, Antonio. Thank uh, to Marco and Alexander for having been dealing with the question. It is an open forum, still open, because we know that it's not the end of story, it's just a starting point. Uh, we will be glad to have you, Antonio, among us on the next meeting, and I hope that we could organize such a meeting with your successful. Perhaps you can uh, suggest him or her to, 
to be available whenever we will be requesting EMOR to be with us in our next conference. Thank you very much again, colleagues, for uh, being so, so, much. so See many. You. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.